Bitcoin just closed the month of August and yeah actually we got a bearish engulfing candle as the monthly close is below the previous month support. So there is something I want to talk about in today's video. We are going to have a look at some different Bitcoin charts. We are also going to have a look at the stablecoin dominance and the SEC made a decision on the BlackRock ETF and other ETFs which I want to have a talk about in today's video at the end of this video which is going to be very important for the trajectory of Bitcoin and I'm going to explain you exactly why but first of all guys uh, the monthly time frame is not looking all too bullish we closed at roughly 26,000 US dollars and yeah right now we are seeing that the month of september is already slightly in the red if we go to the weekly time frame and this this might be a very important weekly close this week why because we actually had a retest of the 200 week moving average and if the candle continue to look like this so this will be a filled retest then that would be very very bearish for bitcoin because generally the 200 week moving average isn't already a level that you don't that is a level where you actually don't want to trade below well we did that during the previous bear market we did trade below the 200 week moving average that's already a huge difference as you can see with other bear markets so this is already evidence to me that momentum on the longer term time frame is fading and that we are seeing the bear markets more steep to the downside and the bull markets less explosive to the upside that is the same reason why the stock to flow model right now is not working anymore. It worked in the past, but right now it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't, it's not valid anymore with the Bitcoin price because the momentum is fading. And that is the same when you have like a stone and you throw it on, on the water. You have the first bounce is really strong. The second bounce is really strong. But the more it bounces, the further we are in the market, the weaker the bounces. Because the more liquidity you need, that's a whole other story, but it's actually quite easily explainable. Uh, but yeah, this is just something for Bitcoin to really become bullish right now. We have to reclaim some significant levels on the weekly time frame. And if we don't do that, then I'm just going to lean a little bit more to the bearer side, even though that is not really the position I want to take, because I would like to be very bullish on Bitcoin. And for the coming years ahead, I am also... Uh, depending on with what time frame I, I am also bullish i think we are early in the in the bull market but just in right now the shorter term time frame this month is just not looking all too good like i also said in my previous videos then when we have a look at the bitcoin futures chart we can see that the the pump of bitcoin which right now has been com completely retraced actually uh, filled the cme gap at 27.5k so that is nice we filled the cme gap above us got rejected from this resistance the former support of that falling wedge formation and right now it's really important for for the bears actually to to break below that low and that low is at the um, yeah roughly at 25,000 25,300 that would be that low so for the bears to get continuation or move to the downside it's very important to break below 25k let's call it 25k for the bulls it's very important to break above the 200 week moving average and hold above those moving averages if bitcoin can't reclaim these levels then the bulls really have a problem if you ask me but the most interesting charts if you ask me are the stablecoin dominance charts and that's also the reason why i'm actually kind of that bearish because this is the us dollar tether dominance this is the usdc dominance and this is both of them combined dominance and all of these charts are looking bullish they screaming they want to go higher and that makes me a little bit cautious with bitcoin because this is a ascending triangle in an uptrend okay most likely breaking out to the upside this is a bull flag in an uptrend looks like right now knocking on the resistance door and we have this falling wedge formation breaking out to the upside with some green candles relative strength index also breaking a resistance like wow this is just very bullish on stablecoin dominance and that is not something you want to see whenever bitcoin is um yeah if you are bullish on bitcoin and what what i think like just to give a just to give my personal humble opinion because i can be wrong like i'm wrong many times 
but what i'm seeing with bitcoin right here is that we really need a catalyst we really need the catalyst and i don't know if the approval of the bitcoin etf is going to be the catalyst we will we are going to talk about that at the end of this video very important but i think the perfect catalyst for bitcoin would be a new crisis a new crisis where the money printer goes back on where the financial markets will pull back and there will be chaos and there will be a crash in the markets something like we have seen in march 2020 and because right now the investors behavior is just it's just not lucrative to be invested in in risk on assets the money supply is, is shrinking there's not much things going on uh actually right now i would say cash is still king and we need new liquidity there need to be a catalyst in some way and i thought it is possible although i'm not really um a support of it but it is possible that the etf could be a catalyst right and um, but i think the etf generally is a bearish sign because it's more a sell the news event but it, it could be possible because we are seeing that when B gold launches first etf in march 2003 we actually saw that if we go to march 2003 that is this blue line right here that once the gold uh, launched this first EFT ETF sorry then we did had a drop in the short term time frame but it eventually led to gold like going up quite a bit right so this was in starting from the year 2003 so gold have definitely been in a uh, massive bull market the question is whether this bull market was also there if we if we divide it by the money supply so we can just um, have a look at the uh, gold against the money supply whether we also in a bull market 2003 back then and yes it looks like that in 2003 we also in a bull market in terms of the um in comparison with the money supply and that is very important because that is i think one of the biggest illusions in today's society is that everyone thinks the economy is doing great everyone thinks we are in a bull market and the economy is growing while this is just factual not the case this is the this is the real financial markets we have never surpassed the highs of the year 2000 with the dot-com crisis and I'm gonna ask like a really important question guys and i i hope i hope one of you can answer this if the stock market is losing value if the stock market is losing purchasing power your dollar is losing purchasing power too then where the hell does that value goes where the hell does that value go so i don't know like this is something i'm investigating now but it's just it's just kind of weird right then the SEC made a decision actually over a couple, a couple of uh, Bitcoin ETFs and they delayed it all. They also delayed the BlackRock ETF, which was all, which was really, um, we really expected that. So we have here a tweet from Dan Crypto Trades, and he um, he also talking about this ETF, and he says that in case of a delay, which we have seen that delay, we just moved towards the next deadline, which puts us in the middle of October. October and towards the end of the year generally tends to be very bullish for Bitcoin. October tends tends to be like a very bullish month for Bitcoin, a, a bullish period. Also for the stock markets, they call this the Halloween effect. That after Halloween, pri uh, that the markets can go up. So this might be a nice nice catalyst. This is something we have to look for in the future. But the next part is more sounds more appealing to me. Then there's the chance of for two more delays until the final deadline in the middle of March 2024. Well, this might be a little bit, sounds maybe a little bit weird, but it is possible that March 2024, early 2024, is, is marking the top of the Bitcoin bull market based on the 16-year cycle. And we might not get that full-blown bull like you are like you are used to, like all the cycles we have seen before. Um but maybe we do maybe the beginning of next year we will see a massive rally in the short term time frame a huge acceleration who knows but this definitely speaks to me like okay if there's a chance for a couple of more delays it makes sense for the uh, sec to make those delays and 
uh, March 2024 is in that time frame of the 16 year cycle top. So it is a it is a wide broad range, but this definitely falls into that range. So it really depends when Bitcoin is trading, what we are seeing on derivatives exchange data and stuff like that in determining when we are going to see a top or how we can uh, how we can spot that top like in real time. But this is just an inter these are just interesting dates which are connected to the um, decision of that uh, Bitcoin spot ETF. So yeah, guys, like I said, I really feel Bitcoin needs some f somewhat of a catalyst. I thought it could be that Bitcoin ETF, but right now it is delayed until October. Maybe we get a correction and then in October, once it's approved, the price can go up. That is possible. I think definitely if the ETF would be approved in October based on time, it has a higher chance of rallying afterwards than when it gets approved in, in March 2024. Because I would say March 2024 is already pretty late in the cycle. Because if we have a look at the macro, um, macro Bitcoin chart right here, then let me get rid of the moving average because then we'll show you a little bit where we are. Then we can see that... We had one four year cycle right here, three years up, one year down, second four year cycle, three years up, one year down, third four year cycle, three years up, one year down. And now we are in the fourth four year cycle and the, the fourth four year cycle, like other asset classes that, that run through these four year cycles, the fourth four year cycle is often different than the first three. And the difference is that the the red zone is flipped with the green zone, which means that the acceleration phase is shorter, shorter than the half of that cycle, so shorter than two years, followed by a multi-year long bear market. This is exactly the same thing where the dot-com bubble and the adoption of the internet also went through. And don't get me wrong, guys, Bitcoin's adoption can grow while being in a multi-year long bear market. We've seen this with the internet as well. After the year 2000, the internet companies went into a multi-year long bear market, but we are seeing the users of the internet still growing. I was using internet back then. A lot of people were using internet back then and the users were just growing, but the markets were in a multi-year long bear market. So that is definitely possible, guys. So don't think like, yeah, but what, what about the adoption of Bitcoin? No, the adoption of Bitcoin can grow, can continue to grow, even though we are in a multi-year long bear market. This is, all, this is all based on cycles. Look at this stepping stone. First touch of the water, massive bounce. Second touch of the water, very big bounce. Third touch of the water, it's bouncing, yes. Another touch of the water those bounces like are going to slow down and i also think that multi-year long bear market can definitely bring bitcoin to some lower levels uh if you just follow this trajectory right so yeah that's just something i want to watch also guys do take in mind that even though i'm short term saying bitcoin is not looking good and it's, it's looking bearish based on all of these charts that is true but also take in mind guys that from a very macro perspective right here we are still in an uptrend we are still in this blue rising channel i don't expect bitcoin to drop lower than twenty thousand us dollars uh, in the next month i i don't expect that we go are going to leave this channel to the downside um so yeah that is also important to note and i do expect a acceleration going into the beginning of next year so really once when i'm talking and when you're listening to me really make sure you you know on what time frame i'm talking about because you know i can be bearish for the month of september but be bullish on the beginning of 2024 as the support is increasing right here and we are getting deeper and deeper into that cycle um so yeah just take that in mind guys okay guys that was it for today's video i hope you all enjoyed it if so smash up that like button guys that is very much appreciated if you want to stay connected with me make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to trade bitcoin make sure to do so over on bybit or bitcat depending if you want kyc yes or no 
on Bybit. Right now, UFKYC on BitGet, not yet. These are the two best exchanges with the highest volume, even though the volume in the crypto markets is completely bleeding dry. I personally wouldn't trust Binance because I think Binance is a house of cards that can collapse every moment. And as you can see right here, the 24 hour volume of Bitcoin, BitGet is like 4.2 billion. Bybit is like 6.7 billion. Phoenix is doing lately also pretty good with getting in a high volume. So yeah, these are definitely the top three exchanges right now with these amounts of volume. Guys, if you want to trade, make sure to join with my affiliate link down below. It's very much appreciated. I wish every single one of you a beautiful day and I hope to see every single one of you in the next video.